Grade 7 Math, number 3.3a, Subtract Positive Rational Numbers. When we subtract rational numbers, we use the same rules as when we subtract integers. Because the minuend in this equation is smaller than the subtrahend, we know the difference will be negative. We have 5.5 take away 7.25, and this is way bigger than that one. So if we do the subtraction, it's going to push us into the negative. We'll use up all of the 5.5 and then some. Just like subtracting integers, we add the opposite. So 5.5 minus 7.25 is going to become 5.5 plus a negative 7.25. We add the opposite. So the negative sign becomes a positive, and this positive 7.25 becomes its opposite, negative 7.25. We find the difference when the signs are different. This is a negative, that's a positive. So we find the difference between the two of them, and that's 1.75. And we take the sign of the larger absolute value, the one that's farther from 0. So the 7 is farther from 0 than the 5, so we take the negative sign of the 7.25. Imagine we're at a store, and you want to buy something for $7.25, but you only have $5.50. You give the cashier your $5.50, and I pay for the rest. Now you owe me, so you're into the negative you would owe me $1.75, it would be a minus 1.75, see? All right, we can subtract positive numbers and get a negative answer if the second number is bigger than the first one, if the minuend, the first one, is smaller. So if we have one and a half and we want to subtract five, we start at the one and a half on the number line, which is right here, here's zero, here's one and a half. And if we want to take five away, well, if we get back to zero, because this is one and a half, that will be one and a half. And if we jump to the negative one, that'll be two and a half, three and a half, four and a half, and then taking another little half, we'll be at five. So now, because we're in between the negative three and the negative four, we're at negative three and a half. So the answer is going to be negative three and a half. See? We know that if we're adding or subtracting any rational number, that we're going to create another rational number. If we have 4 and 1 fourth and want to take away 6, we're going to add the opposite. It's going to become 4 and 1 fourth plus a negative 6. Now, the difference will be a negative number because the first number, the minuend, is too small, so it's going to shove us into the negatives. And the difference will be a fraction because there's one fraction in the equation. The answer is going to have to be a fraction because we're starting with a fraction and taking away a whole number. See? If we have 1 third minus 5 ninths, we need to add the opposite. So this is going to become 3 ninths because we need to make common denominators. So the 1 third to get to the 9 to match the 5 ninths is going to have to be multiplied by 3 in the numerator and denominator. It becomes 3 ninths. So now we have 3 ninths minus 5 ninths. We can see that the 3 ninths is smaller, and it's going to push us into the negative. But we add the opposite. So this minus sign turns into a plus sign, and this positive 5 ninths turns into a negative 5 ninths. Now we've got 3 ninths plus a negative 5 ninths. They have different signs, a positive and a negative. So we find the difference. The difference between 5 ninths and 3 ninths is 2 ninths, and we use the absolute value of the larger, and that would be 5 ninths. So it's a negative, so we have a negative 2 ninths. See? All right, let's try this one. Now we have 7 sixteenths minus 2 eighths. Well, making common denominators, they can both meet at sixteenths, right? So we just multiply the numerator and denominator by 2 and get 4 sixteenths. Now we can subtract them. This is just a regular fifth grade fraction problem, isn't it? Even though we're subtracting, we don't need to add the opposite because this is straightforward. This is bigger. It's not going to go into the negatives because the 7 sixteenths is bigger than 4 sixteenths. It's 3 sixteenths. See? So don't get caught into the habit of doing this and adding the opposite when you may not need to because the minuend is big enough to handle it, okay? And they're both positives. Now we have 0.95 minus 3. We have irrational numbers written in decimal form. 
the 0.95 minus 3, well, this is 0.95, it's 95 one hundredths, it's smaller than 1. And we're trying to subtract three big whole numbers. So it's going to become 0.95 plus a negative 3, because we're going to add the opposite. Now because the signs are different, this is a negative and that's a positive, we're going to find the difference. So we have to add a decimal point and two zeros to the 3 so that we can subtract the 0.95. We do our subtraction and get 0.2, we get 2.05. That's the difference between them. And we take the sign of the larger absolute value, the one that's farther from zero. This isn't even a one, this is 95 one hundredths. And this is three whole, so this is gonna be the bigger one. So it's a negative. So we get a negative 205, see? So just remember that it's no different than subtracting integers. We're gonna add the opposite, okay? And remember, if the first numeral here, integer, whatever, the first rational number is smaller than the subtrahend, it's going to go into the negatives, okay? Because if you have two dollars and you're trying to take ten dollars away, it's going to go into the negatives, isn't it? One and a half minus five is going to go into the negatives, all right? I hope this was helpful. I'll see you in the next video. We're going to continue on in this topic, and I'll tell you more about subtracting rational numbers. Bye.